where should you allocate your money right now? With me, Tiger Wealth Management Managing Partner, partner Michael Lee, and we've got MaxFunds.com co-founder Jonas Max Ferris. Good to be with you. Jonas, what do you think? I think I'm going to sell his double line fund, that gun lock. <laughs> it's been doing worse than cash recently. Um, I will say uh, I was more optimistic after the, the quick crash for the Brexit vote. This quick rebound, I think, was a little too much. It was, in my opinion, driven all by interest rates going down and staying down. They didn't go back up with this recovery. So this is just the lever of stocks are worth more because rates are lower. The problem is, is that oil thing you start with is, is one of the things I'm watching. Like if oil goes back down to the levels it was a few months ago when it was really in a disaster after a whole year of sliding, you're going to get back into the situation where the high risk debt and the junk bonds start to fall apart. It means we might be heading into a recession, if not domestically, certainly some sort of larger global recession. And ultimately that would send stocks down even with low interest rates. So that, that $40 thing, it needs to stay above that to keep all that speculative, highly leveraged oil exploration pipelines, MLPs, they've all recovered, but they will start the cascading problems again if we get back down to the, like heading towards 20s. Michael Lee, what do you think? I think, um, look, I, I think you've you got to go stick with the S&P 500. I'm very positive on the U.S. economy. If you look around and you look a little bit deeper in the numbers, like the GDP report last week, you can see that the U.S. consumer is just booming. So personal consumption was up 4.2%. The headline number wasn't, want, wasn't what we wanted to see. But beyond that, uh, home prices, consumer spending, consumer sentiment, um, all of these numbers are at pre-recession highs, along with home prices, auto sales off a little bit today, but just off all-time highs. Um, all of this is happening. The consumer is doing great while the savings rate is double what it was pre-recession. All right, let me, let, so, I'm going to throw a new one at you. Here's the thing. Uh, I'm going to ask you who is better for the economy. Is it Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump? Donald Trump has a more optimistic agenda. He is about bringing economic growth back into this country by getting the government off the backs of U.S. taxpayers. And Hillary Clinton seems to be about more of the same, more of the same uh, President Obama, Barack, uh, Barack Obama policies. What do you think, Michael? Who's better? Well, um, I'm glad you asked that. I think they'll both be dramatically better because of the regulatory environment we're looking at right now. But I just think a Republican candidate will be able to get meaningful reform passed through, like corporate tax reform, onshoring some of that $2 trillion worth of cash uh, that's offshore that can really lead to uh, some sort of uh, substantial corporate spending. And then if there's going to be any type of okay. infrastructure bill, it's not going to be a Democrat that gets it through a Republican Congress. Okay, so quickly, we, you're going to be with us after the break, Jonas. Who's better, uh, Trump or Hillary, for the economy? Uh, short, one word answer. Short run Trump, but they both are really lousy. Okay, answer, long run word. worse than Obama. One word answer. Who's better? Uh, one word. Of the three, Obama. Okay, uh, no, <laughs> Hillary or Trump. One word. Shh. I, 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 You're gonna can't. I, they both are populist garbage. They're not one. They both want to rip apart trade agreements. That's not good for stocks. All right, you too.